Hey there, this is Dave H, the creator of Jam Bones. You know, I was just about to sit down and put in a new feature into Jam Bones today, and I thought, well, why don't I do a screencast while I do it? And maybe it'll be helpful to developers who are trying to get up to speed. Um, so let's just go through it. We've got this uh, new feature that we need. Um, the ability to set in the dial verb to set a from host. We've got, as it says here, some carriers that we send to are PBXs. And we've got one, blf.phenotel.com. When we send them an invite, um, by default, we're going to put in the IP address of the Jambones SBC that's sending it. And that works for most carriers, for most carriers, but for some, they require their own domain or a specific domain to be in the from header. And they might require a user as well. So what we want to have is an option added to the dial verb. Specifically within the dial verb, we can see if we go and actually look here, we can see in the dial verb you've got sort of targets where you can have different, because you can do kind of a sim ring, sim ring thing. So we've got different targets that describe how the call is going out. What we want to do is add a property so we can um, override and specify the user part of the SIP from header and the host part of the SIP from header. Again, the default for the user part is going to be um, the calling party number, which usually does work. Um, but sometimes we might want to overwrite that. And the host part by default is the IP address of the Jambone server, but we might want to override that. So that's the feature that I'm going to build. Let's get into the code and see how things are laid out and what we need to do. I'm going to start with this specs.json file, actually backing up a little bit. I've got the Jambones feature server repo opened here. And under the lib folder, there's a tasks folder. Under the task folders, you can see files for each of the verbs. So it's hopefully well organized, easy to add new verbs. And we've got, for instance, a dial verb. And all the code with a dial verb is in there. If you're just getting started and you want to look at something simple, look at a simple verb like this pause verb. Uh, you can see they're all subtasks or subclasses of the task command, um, and they have some very a few basic things that they need to do, methods they need to implement. We see the minimal here, something like the dial verb. Obviously, it does a lot more. Also in here, you'll see a file called specs.json. Um, this describes essentially this is the the specification behind. Uh, this structure. When we say that a dial verb has these properties or some other verb has those properties, these are all defined in here. Um, that's why if someone sends us garbage, we can reject it because we look at what they're sending and we compare it to this specs file. I'm not going to go into how this file is laid out. You're, you're going to figure it out pretty quickly. We've got a verb, got properties. Some of them may be required. So let's look for uh, the dial verb. Here it is. You can see that required is the target. Target is an array. It's an array of another type of object called target. So let's go see if we can find that. Here it is. A target has properties. Um, so it's got a type, which can be an enumerate. It must be it's a string, and it can be one of these. Again, this is completely as described here. Um, and a bunch of other properties. Now, it does have headers, but those aren't going to be useful for us now. These are just going to be headers attached by um, the invite sent by the feature server, which is then going to go through the SBC. So we need something more specific. So I'm going to add a new property. I was going to call it from. Um, from is going to be an object itself. And I could just say it's an object. But I want to be able to say more specifically what's in it. So let's create a new property called dial from. Let's just come here then and say dial from. And dial from is going to have um, properties. It's going to have two properties because I said that uh, we want to, oh, here's a code pilot trying to tell me what to do. Uh, we'll say we'll have a user. Oops. Oops. Which will be a string and a host, uh, which is also a string. And uh, are they, is anything required? Um, well, you can have one or the other. You really don't need both. So I'm just going to say nothing. So neither is actually required. So you can have either. Okay. 
So that's the first thing. We've updated the spec so that we can now accept a dial command that has this new property from, which will be an object, potentially having one or two headers, user and host. So that lets us actually get this command in. Um, as you can guess, we probably then have to change the dial verb to actually attach those. Let's go to the dial verb. Um, and the dial verb actually uses another class or another uh, function under utils called place out dial. Every out dial we make, um, through, regardless of how through the dial verb or whatnot, is, comes down through here. So here we're going to have that, and we're going to get options in here. So target, for instance, or get this is a doing a it's called single dialer because as you saw we could have a target that's an array of numbers that we want to dial in a simmering fashion. Um, we'll create a single dialer class for each of these; they'll be going on simultaneously. But for a given thing, uh, we may have target, and uh, we could have from. So let's just say this dot from equals target dot from or, or just empty I suppose if there's in, in the general case or usually people aren't going to supply that but now that we've added it maybe they are going to supply it. so let's go look and see where we're doing the out dial here's the exec um, all the tasks this isn't actually a task but it's kind of some of the structures like a task all the tax tasks have an exec method that um, is invoked when Jambones tells that verb to actually it's time to execute. This looks interesting and maybe relevant. We got some headers. It looks like we're going to apply some things. So maybe what we want to do is apply some new headers there. Come down. We're going to do some different things based on type. This feature here is, isn't dependent on type. It's something we could want to do for any type. And we're going to set that. Let's see. We're going to then create an endpoint that we can dial out from. And here we are creating uh, UAC using Dractio SRF, if you're familiar with that. Um, so yeah, it looks like we could do some headers in here. We could do something like this, conditionally add them. So let's do this. Let's say dot, dot, uh, this dot from dot user. So if we have that, um, we'll say, And so if we've got a from user, we'll do something like X. Let's just say preferred from. Let me just check that that's what I had, the from. Yeah, so it'll be from user. Okay. Preferred from. Uh, let's see, what is it not doing? Like in here. Boom, boom. Similarly, if we have an X host, we'll say X preferred host. Okay, what do we really accomplish here? Nothing other than the feature server is now going to include these two custom SIP headers on the invite that it sends. And the invite that are sent by feature servers don't go directly out to the world. They go through the SBC. Specifically, they go through the SBC outbound application. So we've now made our changes to Feature Server, but we need to make a change to the SBC Outbound app. So now I'm going to pop over and find that one here. Okay, and here is the SBC Outbound app. It's main. It's uh, structured very much similar to the inbound app, so they're they're almost they're almost copies of each other. Um, and under lib, there's a call session which handles everything about the call. If we come down here, we're going to be sending out a call, but we're doing a few things first. We are now here we're creating some headers, and these are the headers that are going out to the outside world. So we can see that we're creating a from header using this create b from header, passing in the request. We're also passing in an indication of where this came from Microsoft Teams because there's a special case for handling stuff with Teams. And then down here we're doing a bunch of stuff, and eventually we're sending the call out. We're now, you saw before, we stuck on some custom headers. We kind of don't want those to go to the outside world. Here, we're taking them off. So the headers that have a dash in front, basically, we've got, uh, and this is the Dractio SRF, which, again, some of you may be familiar with, some not. 
So we're going to do create B2B UA. So it's going to act like a B2B UA. We're sending, receiving an invite. That invite's coming from a feature server. We're sending out an invite, and we're saying proxy the proxy the, some of the request headers from that invite. Actually, first we're using the keyword all. So we're saying proxy all of them. Then we're backing off and saying subtract these ones. So if it starts with a dash X, it means subtract. We actually don't need to say include XCID because, in fact, it's already included with all. So I don't know why I had that, and I'm tempted to remove those two. Um, but now we've got two new headers that we want to remove. We're going to use them but for some logic, but we do not want to send these to the outside world. Oh, and that was wrong. It was X preferred user is what I wanted that to be. So X preferred user, X preferred host. Um, so we'll X preferred user, X preferred host. So we've stripped those out so they don't go to the outside world. Up here, though, where we create the B from like header, this is where we would want to use it. If we look at this, we can see we're doing a special case thing for teams. If it's teams, we've got another header that is actually giving us the host. If it's not Teams, we're putting in this keyword localhost. It doesn't mean that localhost will actually be in the host name, but it's a feature of the Directio server that if it sees an outbound invite sent to localhost, it will replace that with its own IP. So basically, the calls are going out with uh, its, um, the IP of the SBC, and that's why that's happening. So we want to change that a little bit. Let's just change it around. So first, let's just say if Teams, we're going to do... We're going to do something. We can just say um, let's, make, let's make host. Well, let's just make host default to local host to start with. And then if it's teams, we'll say host equals this guy. So I'm just recreating the code. Um, else, it's not teams if request dot has. X, so let's say that's not the one I want. Of course I want, if we've got either of these. Eh, screwing things up. Eh, screwing it up again. I can just copy this. So let's we'll say if it has user or it has Host, we got to do something a little special. Um, boom, boom, boom. Let's go ahead. Actually, let's put some stuff up here. Here we're taking the URI that came in in the front. We're parsing it into pieces so we can we can use that. The default case, which is the normal case, it's not Teams, and we didn't want to override, is essentially this case right here. Right, so if it's Teams, we're going to do something. If it's, we've got this special case, we're going to do something. The normal case, we're simply going to create a SIP URL with the incoming username and our own host, local host. Um, or we're going to return anonymous. So we don't need this anymore. We're going to need something down there in a second. But let's look at this. So if this is the case, uh, we'll say, um, let's say, if, if uh, so if, if we have, well, let's go, let's just do both. Let's just say, Oops, const user equals request user request dot get next for user host request dot get next preferred host. Um, we'll say well, user is user or user host is host or localhost and then we can simply say return 
can do the same thing. We can basically do the same thing from here. Return zip colon user at host. Okay, so if we're going to do that, we need this. So here we would return zip URI at host. Let's see how that looks. So teams, take the host, use the incoming phone number, override, look at the user and host. Normal case, we'll uh, get the user and host. Yeah, we'll, we'll just use our local thing. Yeah, that's it. Oops. So that's basically the feature. I'm going to go off and test it now, but I just wanted to let you ride along with me to get a little brief overview of um, some of the code structure for those who are interested. Thank you.